Welcome back everybody to episode number 12 of the Ask Me Anything series, the series where you guys ask me anything that pertains to the NHL or just hockey in general. I go through, pick out some of the questions, and we talk about them in a video. Now obviously I can't talk about every question that is asked because there are hundreds on every single post, but just know I do read all of the comments and I really appreciate every single one of you who took the time out of your day to go ahead and leave a question on the post. With that all being said, let's go ahead and get started with the first comment from Samuel Paradis who says, do you think the Red Wings have a slight chance at making the playoffs or is it a reach? I'm definitely going to say it's a little bit of a reach. The team obviously improved this offseason and they are continuing to get better, but there's still a lot of work to do. A lot of things would have to go right for Detroit to even be competitive and be competing for a playoff spot down the stretch this season. I think Lucas Raymond would have to come in and almost be a star immediately. Same goes for Moritz Sider. Nedeljkovic would have to put up Vesna caliber numbers. Obviously, the top guys on the team would have to stay healthy. You guys see where I'm going with this. It would almost have to be a perfect season. I think if the Red Wings were going to make the playoffs. My expectations are the Red Wings are once again going to be a bottom feeder team. I would say at least bottom seven in the league and then maybe the season after that. So 2022-23 is when they could start to get a little bit competitive and maybe be competing for a playoff spot. From Jeremiah Hunt, who do you think is the best defenseman in the NHL right now? I know Adam Fox just won the Norris Trophy as league's best defenseman this past season and I think it was well deserved. But in my opinion, the best defenseman in the league is Kale McCarr. I think there's a chance he would have won the Norris this past season had he not gotten injured. Makar is almost the perfect defenseman. There really isn't any flaws in his game. He does pretty much everything at an elite level. He can quarterback a power play. He puts up a ton of points at even strength as well. He's good defensively and I think a lot of that is because Colorado just dominates with him on the ice and they usually have the puck in their possession and when that's the case you don't have to defend all that much but when he needs to he can defend and he can do it well. I feel like he's also more physical than people give him credit for. He's just a game breaking talent from the blue line. I think that's the best way to sum up his game. He's already a super star at such a young age and I think he is well worth the contract extension he was given by the Avalanche. Moving along now to the next comment, this one comes from Nick Pelrin who says, do you think that a $9 million AAV for Nurse is too much? I believe this comment was left before his extension was made official. Final numbers for Nurse's extension came in at 8 years and a $9.25 million AAV and yeah, that is definitely too much but I feel like some people are blowing it out of proportion and making it sound like it's going to be one of the worst contracts in the NHL immediately. Ken Holland has made a lot of questionable moves with the Edmonton Oilers, but he didn't really have a lot of leverage here, especially when you take a look at what Seth Jones got from Chicago, the extension Zach Wierenski signed as well. To keep Darnell Nurse around, Edmonton was going to have to pay him a lot, and that's exactly what happened here. They couldn't risk losing their best defenseman for nothing, especially when you consider that their blue line is not very good in the first place. So yeah, it is definitely too much. I don't think it's a good contract by any means, but I also don't think it's the worst in the league either, and I feel like some people are kind of making it out to be that way. From Spen CD, favorite player that never lived up to the hype? This is a really good question. I'm actually going to go with Zachary Fucali, goaltender. I'm sure a lot of people watching this video don't even know who he is. He played for the Halifax Mooseheads in junior the same time McKinnon, Druen, all those guys were on the Mooseheads. When the team won the Memorial Cup, he was the goalie. He also played for Team Canada in the World Juniors for two consecutive tournaments. He's a guy that I really liked, had a connection to because I watched him play live so many times and he was a part of arguably the greatest Halifax Mooseheads team of all time. He actually ended up being a second round pick by the Montreal Canadiens. I can't remember exactly what draft. I think it was probably 2013, the same year McKinnon went. But yeah, he just never panned out at the NHL level. I think up until this point, he's actually never appeared in an NHL game yet. He's always been bouncing up and down between the ECHL and the AHL. So he would definitely be my pick for this question. This next comment is a pretty creative and interesting one as well from Matt F. What team building trend do you see teams hopping on in the next five to 10 years? For example, the latter half of the last decade was heavily influenced by analytics right now one of the trends is tandem goaltending as opposed to a traditional starter backup 60-20 split. I actually couldn't really think of any team building trends that I could see happening in the next couple of years but I do actually have a strategy or game plan kind of thing that I could see a lot of teams doing and that strategy is playing five forwards on the power play as opposed to you know one defenseman and four forwards or two defensemen and three forwards. It's something we've seen the Winnipeg Jets do multiple times throughout the past couple of seasons. In three on three overtime Winnipeg actually usually doesn't put out a defense they just put out three forwards. A lot of times they'll do Kyle Connor, Nikolai Ehlers, and Mark Scheifele or Blake Wheeler and a combination of those guys as well. So that is something that I could see a lot of teams picking up on in the next couple of years, especially teams that don't really have a high-end offensive defenseman that's capable of quarterbacking a power play. I could see them just throwing out five forwards. Next up, this comment comes from Verizon Gaming. How much will Suzuki cost when the ELC is finished? Well, I think the biggest thing is it depends on if they want to go the route of a bridge contract first or if they just want to get him locked up 
up long term right away and also how he plays this upcoming season is going to be a big factor as well and just based off of the current trajectory of Nick Suzuki's career how he has progressed how good he already is I can't imagine the AAV coming in at anything less than like six and a half million even if it's on a bridge contract it's a little bit vague but I'm gonna say my prediction is it comes in anywhere from six and a half to like eight million a year from bar down breaks 97 do you think the additions of Fogel and Hyman will put the Oilers past the first round they definitely improved their forward core so far this offseason and that is definitely something that needed to happen I also really like the addition of Derek Ryan I think he's going to be a good bottom six centerman for the Oilers that being said I'm really not confident in their blue line or in their goaltending situation I know Mike Smith was fantastic in 2020-21 but he's 39 years old he's going to be turning 40 in March that's not really a guy who I think they should be relying upon to play you know a ton of games and carry a lot of the load in the season and then expect him to carry them through the postseason as well I definitely don't think Miko Koskinen is the answer either so yes while they did improve their forward depth and that's something they needed to do I'm still really skeptical about the other parts of their team this next question comes from Gregory Diem I hope I said your last name right I apologize if I butchered it but the question is do you think the Rangers are a better team now post free agency I'm not sure if I would say that they are a better team now on paper I think they are going to miss Buchnevich. I will definitely say though they are a tougher team to play against with the additions of Barclay Goudreau and Ryan Reeves and that's obviously something the Rangers felt they needed to do they needed to make their team tougher and when it comes to Reeves and Goudreau those guys aren't just useless players who are only there to you know fight and beat other people up they are actually impactful bottom six players if the Rangers are going to get better I think a lot of it is just going to come from internal growth you know players like Alexi Lafreniere and Capo Caco getting better Igor Shosturkin you know getting better all their young players just taking steps I think they're in a good spot right now next up this question comes from Ben Murray who says do you think this year is the last legit chance for the Bruins to win the cup with this core I wouldn't say it's their last legit chance yes Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron are getting up there in age but those guys don't really make much sense it seems like they're only getting better with age so until we see them actually decline a little bit I don't want to go as far as saying they can't win with this core anymore and obviously Pasternak is still very much so in the midst of his prime and should be for a very long time same goes with Charlie McAvoy now they are definitely going to miss David Krejci I feel like that second line center spot for Boston is a little bit foggy right now and if Patrice Bergeron say goes down with an injury or something then things can get ugly it would be huge for Boston if Charlie Coyle can have a bounce back season and you know slot into that second line center spot I think this season the Bruins are still going to be very good I like a lot of the moves that they made in free agency getting goaltending depth with Linus Olmark I think that was smart to do with the uncertainty surrounding Tuka Rask next up we have a comment from Ryan Plunkett Hockey who says do you think that the Kraken might trade one of their goalies for future assets at the next trade deadline since it looks like they are not looking at becoming a cup contender just yet I don't think they're going to trade any of their goalies I mean we already saw them move on from Vitek Vanacek so I would imagine they're going to stick with Drieger, Grubauer and Joey Decord I really can't see them trading Chris Drieger he was one of the players who actually came out at the expansion draft had the jersey on everything like that they're not going to trade Grubauer obviously or they wouldn't have signed him to that massive extension or not extension I should say they wouldn't have signed him to such a big contract in free agency and they need a third goaltender they need someone to be the starter of their American Hockey League affiliates so I think that's going to be Joey Decord so yeah I don't really envision them trading away any of their goaltenders at least right now anyways from Armando L I know he played hurt most of the year but do you think Victor Hedman will bounce back I'm not really all that sure what you mean by that because he was literally a finalist for the Norris Trophy a lot of people thought he was actually going to win the Norris Trophy I feel like that just speaks to how damn good Victor Hedman is the fact some people think maybe he didn't have a great year even though he was very very close to winning the Norris I do agree with you though he definitely played through some injuries throughout the season and I think for sure was not near 100% healthy in the playoffs either this next Next comment comes from cardkid56 at this point do you think vladimir tarasenko will still be traded i do only because st louis kind of needs the cap space i believe last time i checked on cap friendly they had under like 2 million in projected cap space right now and they still have a pretty notable rfa in robert thomas so i think he's going to command like at least north of 4 million moving along now this next comment comes from gurpal singh who says what is your opinion on some nhl players coming out and expressing their disinterest for playing on canadian nhl teams is it really Really that bad in Canada shake my head love your content keep it up I appreciate the kind words I personally love living in Canada but I can definitely see why it would be unappealing for some NHL players I mean the tax you have to pay in Canada is obviously a lot worse than the majority of states down in the US so I think that's definitely a factor the weather also in Canada is pretty extreme at times especially in the winter and there's obviously that added pressure of playing for a Canadian market especially if it's the Toronto Maple Leafs the Montreal Canadiens the media coverage is insane every little thing you do is going to be critiqued down to the T so I can definitely see 
why it's a thing amongst some NHL players, but for me personally, answering your question as to is it really that bad in Canada? No, I love living here. And now for the final comment of the video, this comes from Justin Coleman. The New Jersey Devils made big splashes this offseason, picking up Hamilton, Graves, Bernier, and now Tatar. Do you think they did enough to fill their holes and make a run to the playoffs? I would be surprised if the Devils weren't at least competing for a playoff spot down the stretch. Like, I think they're going to be in the hunt for the entire season. I can't really see them being like one of the bottom five teams in the league. I love what they did this offseason. They now have an elite talent on the blue line in Dougie Hamilton. I like their goaltending tandem in Mackenzie Blackwood and Jonathan Bernier. And who knows if Jack Hughes takes another step forward and gets closer and closer to becoming a true star centerman. I think this team could be a lot further along than some people might expect. So that is going to wrap up episode number 12 of the Ask Me Anything series. Like I said at the start of the video, I do really appreciate everybody who took the time out of their day to go ahead and leave a question on the post. One thing I want to give you guys a heads up on before I end off the video, I am going on vacation from August 15th to August 21st. So over the next couple of days, I'm going to start pre-recording some videos to have them scheduled to upload when I'm away, when I'm not actually able to record them. So definitely be sure to get down there in the comment section down below and let me know any videos at all that you guys want to see.